so I'm here and then I go there. How's that? Welcome to Cinemagna. In today's video, we will showcase the behind-the-scenes footage of the 2021 American action spy film titled The 355. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel to be notified when new videos are released. The 355 is an upcoming American action spy film directed by Simon Kinberg, based on a story by Teresa Rebeck and a screenplay by Teresa Rebeck and Kinberg. Jessica Chastain, Lupita Nyong'o, Penelope Cruz, Diane Kruger, Fan Bingbing, Sebastian Stan, and Edgar Ramirez are among the cast members. In the 355, a dream team of powerful female stars come together in a hard-driving new take on the globe-trotting espionage genre. When a top-secret weapon falls into the hands of mercenaries, Wild Card CIA agent Mason Mace Brown, played by Oscar nominee Jessica Chastain, will be forced to team up with rival badass German agent Marie, played by Diane Kruger, former MI6 ally, and cutting-edge computer specialist Kataja, played by Oscar winner Lupita Nyong'o, and skilled Colombian psychologist Graciela, played by Oscar winner Penelope Cruz, on a deadly breakneck mission to recover it while simultaneously staying one step ahead of Lin Mai Sheng, a mysterious woman who is watching their every move. The quartet of women will build a tenuous loyalty that might defend the world, or get them killed, as the action flies throughout the globe from the cafes of Paris to the marketplaces of Morocco to the luxury and splendor of Shanghai. Edgar Ramirez and Sebastian Stan also star in the film. The 355 is produced by Chastain and Kelly Carmichael for Chastain's Freckle Films and by Kinberg for his Kinberg Genre Films and is distributed by Universal Pictures in collaboration with Film Nation Entertainment. Richard Hewitt, Bohemian Rhapsody, Esmond Wren, Chinese Zodiac, and Wang Rui Huan are executive producers on the picture. Universal Pictures is planning to release the 355 on January 7. 2022. Without much further ado, please enjoy the behind the scenes video. to make a move now. You'll never make it out alive.
I've always been very outspoken about um, how women in the film industry have been treated in the past and were continuing continue to be treated. And it was important for me to make a film where we had actresses um, not just for hire but as owners, to have ownership over their work. It was a, very much a sense of um, having each other's back and um, understanding that the position that we were in was not a normal situation to be in. And we were very grateful for that. It's been an incredible experience. 355 was the identity code name for the first female spy during the American Revolution. And she was a real person, but her real name remains a mystery to this day. And uh, our consultant um, and other women who are active agents currently working in the field have said that it is a badge of honor to be um, referred to as 355 for women working today. So for me, um, the film being called 355 really is a tip of the hat to the women who were unrecognized and it's amplifying their power, their strength, their accomplishments, and it's saying thank you. Mace is a CIA agent who is definitely used to working alone. Um, she is quick and uh, can be a bit ruthless. She's easy to fight and to go to violence. Um, she has to learn, I guess, in this film that you can create a family wherever you want it. A family is, is where you make a family. And uh, like Marie, she has to learn to trust. But she is very quick-witted, funny, um, and uh, protective of her friends. Bixing has an air of mystery about her, and the incredible thing about that character is when Mace and the other woman meet her, they realize they're a little bit out of their league on all aspects. I mean, she has incredible um, computer skills, hacking skills, and she's also uh, an incredible field agent. And um, her, she has very strong athletic ability. So the women don't quite know what to do with Misheng, and um, they don't quite know whether or not to trust her. 355 takes place all over the world. We see Colombia and the United States and England and Paris and Morocco and Shanghai. <laughs> We're all over there. And I think that's the, the most fun aspect for me in addition to getting these scenes, um, these wonderful scenes with these women, is the idea of you know, being all over the world. My character is Khadija and she is an agent with the MI6 that has taken a back seat from the work in the field. And she has taken on um, a technological role of trying to create uh, a program that can not only protect but predict possible uh, digital warfare and weaponry. And uh, she's very intelligent, extremely passionate about digital security and she is extremely skilled in what she does, one of the best in the world, and a very direct woman, wound but not tight. Mace, uh, which is played by Jessica Chastain, works with the CIA, and, and Marie is, I guess, her most um, equal character in this film in terms of uh, the missions they've done, um, level of, of I guess work they've done. Um, they're very type A, both of them very, uh, you know, thorough and, and I don't want to say ruthless, but they're definitely smooth and, and put their jobs first. Um, they're kind of, they're a little bit lone, they're, they're loners in a, in a way in their lives, you know, their job is kind of their lives. And so, unsurprisingly, they do not like each other very much from the get-go, because I guess they're too similar in a way. 
And over the course of this movie, um, you know, they start to trust each other and um, gain each other's respect as well. And, and so it's, it's this beautiful cat and mouse relationship. Part of what is exciting about the film is that each, each one of us comes from a different country and speaks a different language and we have all these different language skills that are being put to use in this movie. Um, so from the get-go, you feel like this film has an international scope and an international story that um, hopefully will appeal to a very broad audience. I love Simon. Simon has been the rock um, of this film. You know, he's so experienced, obviously, as a writer and as a producer. Um, so the scope of, of this film does not intimidate him. He's super even keeled. He loves collaborating. Um, he loves actors and most importantly actresses and he gives all of us the chance to be heard and we all we all collaborate. Um, he, he's super happy when things go well. He listens to all of our concerns. Um, you know, this is a bunch of pretty strong women. Uh, it's not easy, I guess, to be the, the one guy on set. <laughs> and so he's, he's been wonderful, you know. I, 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 I can't gush about him more, to be honest. The movie's shot in different languages. In a, in, a seamless, in a seamless way, we switch from one language to another. Um, and that's basically the world that we live in, you know? And, uh, and, and, and for me, that's, uh, that's very exciting because it also gives the audience the opportunity to, to experience different, different worlds, to really embark themselves into a journey, you know? And, uh, and to really feel removed. Everybody get, gets to, 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 to play hard in this film. And, uh, and, and for Sebastian and I, it was so much fun to, to do our action scenes uh, and also to do, to, 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 to do them on, on location in one of the most beautiful cities in the world, which is Paris. And I think that that is a dream because you want the texture of location. You know, you want, you want, you want this. You know, you want the texture, and I think that that the, the, the texture of, of, of real locations um, um, inform informs everyone, informs the director, informs informs the crew, informs clearly, you know, production design, and informs the actors. You know, because you're there. I mean, you don't you don't need to you don't need to imagine anything. You just need to, to, to focus on what your action is, because everything is talking to you. Everything is sending you messages. We've actually had the, the collaboration of, of real, you know, um, analysts and, and spies that have collaborated with us to, to tell the story as faithful and as, as, um, and as real as possible. And it's not an easy life. And, and of course, you know, there's a, there's a lot of baggage. These people have seen a lot of things, you know. They have to make very complicated choices in their lives um, that affect them personally in a very impactful way. Really it's the story of five characters coming together to form ultimately what is this family or group um, or team, whatever you want to call it, um, of super agents um, who each have a different skill set and so they complete each other the same way you, you would have in a sports movie or you would have in a family drama. It just so happens that they're spies. Grassi is played by Penelope Cruz, and she is um, a Colombian um, psychologist who works for um, the Colombian Directorate of Intelligence, their CIA. Uh, but she's not someone who's a field agent at the beginning of the film. She's actually someone who is a psychologist who sits in an office back in Colombia, and when agents come back from being in the field, she analyzes um, them, and she... Uh, she tries to help them through their post-traumatic stress and, and whatever else they have to deal with. And for the first time, she is forced, because of circumstances, to be out in the field herself and have to deal with the trauma that she's only really heard about. And it is traumatic for her initially, but over the span of the film, I think she starts to actually um, become more and more competent, maybe even get a little bit of a taste for it. Uh, and, and so I guess I would say she's the eyes and ears of the movie for us. The character uh, of Luis, played by Edgar Ramirez, um, is a Colombian field agent um, who has gone rogue. Uh, he, he's, he's someone who, at the beginning of the film, 
has taken this object, this really potentially deadly, massively deadly um, weapon, and um, he's willing to sell it to the highest bidder. Uh, he does have a conscience, he has more nuance and complexity to him, but he's just a, a guy who I think has um, a family back home and doesn't know, you know, from day to day if he's going to live or die and sees this, this, this opportunity um, to get out of this life and to, to you know, uh, provide for his family financially. The title 355 comes from, you know, one of the consultants on our movie um, who we can't even reference because she actually um, is herself living a, um, let's call it secret life. Um, but one of our consultants uh, knows everything about um, being a uh, field agent operative. And she told us about this term. It's a term that's used today still, often as a slang term for a female um, um, operative, field operative, special agent. And where it comes from is originally uh, during the American Revolution, um, George Washington used a or more than one female spy. And as opposed to the male spies whose names were, and like he himself, um, whose names were emblazoned on, you know, our money and, and Mount Rushmore and, and uh, the history books, the female agents were never known. They didn't want their names to be known um, because it wasn't something that was considered um, uh, ladylike or a world for women. And so they simply got the moniker of 355, uh, and, and that's where it comes from. She's just someone who, um, one, has great creative ideas, obviously, um, both as an actress and as a, as a storyteller, but also is um, as driven as the character she plays. Um, and uh, like her character, um, any boundary, any no, any challenge um, is not, um, something that uh, she takes as a no, it's something she takes as, um, you know, I guess, uh, like I say, a challenge. Um, and so having her on your side is an extraordinary thing because she's just uh, so strong and driven and um, focused and determined. And, it, and for me, as the director, um, that's the kind of producer you want. The project really came from knowing we wanted an international cast and reaching out to actresses from territories that were, you know, really exciting, that work in the sub-spy genre. Um, so it was, it really started with reaching out to the ladies and talking to them about what roles they would want to play in a spy movie, because everyone loves the genre. So it was really, okay, what would you want to do? And the script and the characters were built from the actresses, the ground up, which is never how a script comes together. Usually there's IP or there's an idea, but our idea was just let's get these girls together and try something fun. We always knew because we are in a genre that has, you know, audiences want certain things out of their spy genre. So we knew we needed a chase. And so um, Teresa Reback, along with Simon and Jessica and everyone when we were writing the script, had the idea of having a motorcycle chase through Paris. And then it was once that Simon Elliott and Simon Kimberg were on the location scouts, they found these arcades and the idea was, okay, well, these badass women should be riding motorcycles through the arcade and knocking people out of the way. So it really set up like this is going to be big action, high intensity, we're not going to stop. And it's, yeah, that was literally our first day. So our two male leads are Sebastian Stan playing Nick. Who's Mace, who plays Mace's CIA partner, counterpart. And Luis is uh, an agent from Colombia. And both those actors, we, when we were casting the movie, we didn't talk to any other actors about the roles. We literally were, when it was being written, we knew those were both the guys we wanted. Um, and thankfully they both said yes. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.